All right, folks. Now, when I think about it, it seems that Wargaming really, really likes the IS-2 chassis. I mean, we already have six premium tanks based off of the IS-2, three heavy tanks, and three ISUs. This is the fourth premium, technically the fifth in total. Holy crap! The ISU-122-2 double barrel premium tier 8 Russian tank destroyer. Because why not? I mean, it would be great if it was a 152mm, but twin 122s, tier 9 heavy tank gun, the BL-13, found on the object 257 or 705, but it's a tank destroyer, so looks like the same playstyle as a 263, in a sense, rear mounted superstructure, looks like artillery piece, like a FE 3805 or 207, but they say it's 190 at the hull front, doesn't really look like 190, that looks like 90mm, similar to the ISU 152, so yeah that looks like 90mm on a basic ISU, that doesn't look thick, <laughs> they say it's 190 but looks like only 90, yeah it's 90 at the superstructure, so yeah you cannot fool me, compare this thickness to the 210 found on the object 261, that is 210, that is meaty, that is thick, <laughs> that's not 20 millimeter less, no way, so I think it only pertains to the mantlet and therefore this thing is a sniper, <laughs> it's not a Fernand, <laughs> can't be in the back and snipe with double barrels, ick I guess, I'll give it the benefit of the doubt, maybe. <laughs> So it looks like a artillery piece, right? It looks like the FE-3805, but brace, technically in the front of the vehicle. It will be interesting if this thing has a better reverse speed and slower top speed, so it drives like the Crusader SPG. That will be fun, but yeah, I'll trade that. I'll play a gimmicky top speed for better DPM. That will be funny, but same old Dushka on top closed top vehicle so you could put vents on this thing compared to the SU-130PM that would be nice but large brace you cannot even use it to give yourself better stabilization after firing unfortunate Dushka on top it's not a bad looking vehicle but like I said the fourth ISUs <laughs> as a premium Ugh, they took away the BL-10 on the tier 8 I still haven't forgiven Wargaming when they did that, god damn it. So historically there is actually a model of an open top rear mounted ISU with twin barrels. So here is one of the model pictures, I dug it up from one of the forums or the Russian pages, so they were talking in Russian about the stuff, they dig up some of the interesting pictures. And they called it the bear, it is a 152 times 2 not a 122 howitzer SPG. So I presume that's the BL-10, the original gun on the ISU-152 or the current gun that's on the 704. That would be a lot more interesting as a premium tank, I mean, double shot, 750 alpha damage, so basically 1500 damage, double shot. You'll wipe out any tier 8 vehicle <laughs> with one double shot. That would be scary, nah that's too broken, you cannot have that, that would be too fun I guess, you can't have fun in worlds with tanks, you cannot, alright main stats, so 2 BL-13s, penetration, a heavy tank gun, so okay for a tank destroyer, not the craziest but alpha damage is actually, I think a little bit lower than the BL-13 standard, which is 440 on the tier 9 heavy tanks, let me take a closer look. BL-13 on the 705, you can also use the 130, but I use the 122. BL-13 is 440 alpha, so somehow you have 50 less alpha, even though you're using the same gun, technically, but you have more penetration. Alright, shell is different. Shell velocity is alright, but high explosive end the tank round is slower. 
Now, the main feature of this vehicle is they want you to use a double shot. They don't want you to fire the gun simultaneously like you could do with some of the heavier tanks. So they want you to use the double shot because the gun changing time is kind of long. Usually it's about 4 seconds or 3 seconds. So you can simultaneously fire the first gun and readjust in like 3 seconds to fire the second shot. They don't want you to do that. So you might as well wait to reload on 10 seconds then waiting for the gun to change. So they want you to do the double shot. Salvo preparation is a little bit faster than the heavy tanks and reload time lock after the double shot is shorter in terms of wait, uh, wait time compared to the heavier tanks but yeah they want you to do the double shot they don't want you to fire simultaneously so compare this to a ST2 so double shot lock time or preparation time afterwards is 7... 4 seconds so you have to wait a little bit no 3 seconds no, preparation is 2.5. Lock time is 3. Uh, it's real low block factor fire and salvo. Yeah, it's 3 seconds. It's not 4. <laughs> so, basically, 7 seconds is... You might as well wait for the 10 seconds. Right? You might as well wait for 10 seconds than 7 seconds of changing your gun. So they want you to do the double shot. On paper, 0 0.37 accuracy is ick. But with a 100% crew, it's about 0.35, which is workable. 5 degrees of gun depression, 15 elevation, 2 seconds of aim time, which is actually pretty quick for 2 guns. 60 rounds, that's a lot of rounds. But then again, it's a large superstructure in the back. Gun traverse speed, yeah, okay-ish. Crew of 5, fits all with the Russian tank destroyers. 40 km per hour top speed. Hull traverse is actually fast, considering... It's a heavy tank chassis. Now, gun traverse speed is... Eh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's only moving the gun up and down with 18 degrees. You'll be fine. But 16 horsepower per ton ratio. Not bad. I mean, regularly, it's about 14 or so on the ISUs. Health is actually healthy. Chunky. 1400. And 190 at the hull front. Now, technically, I think that pertains only to the mantlet. Like I said... Doesn't look like 210 compared to the the thickness on this thing. That's 210 at least, right? So it doesn't look like that. It looks like 90. So only the mantlet is 190. Side armor, crap. Rear armor, crap. View range is actually all right. It's a tank to shore. Radio is standard. <sighs> it feels like this thing is actually faster than an ISU 152. Like... 16 horsepower per ton ratio compared to, I think it was 14? ISU 152. 14 without a turbocharger. That is, uh, that is fast, obviously. Now, only 40 kilometer per hour top speed compared to 43, but you traverse faster. So mobility wise, this thing is faster. It weighs a little bit more too. Technically, you could go ramming with this thing. Maybe. Health-wise, you have 200 more health. All right. Now, the main thing about this gun is they want you to do the double shot, but it's a double gun uh, system thing, so no rammer, obviously. But why do the double shot when you could do about the same damage with one round of the 152? Right. I mean, double shot is 780 compared to 750 of the single shot. You have more DPM especially with the rammer on the single shot. So the only good thing about this gun is the aim time and the accuracy. Yeah, you have better aim time, better accuracy. That's great, but you have to work with the double shot. You have less penetration as well. Sometimes the double shot doesn't even work out. Half the shot pins, the other half doesn't even pin or bounce. So I don't know how I feel about that. Ugh. All right, one second. Oh, one second after you double shot. That is the lock. Seven seconds is the switching of the gun. So compare this to four seconds. Obviously, they want you to do the double shot. They don't want you to do simultaneously shooting. One shell after another. But camo is 13.11. So, I mean, it's better than nothing. But I have a camo crew on. That doesn't count. <laughs> 
uh, have a camel does matter a lot to support tank destroyers. It's a support. Yep, fifteen. So it has a little bit less camo because of the superstructure. It's a little bit taller than the actual ISUs. All right. View range, 370. 350. Yeah, okay. 370 is a lot better than standard Russian garbage view range for heavy tanks and tank destroyers at tier 8. 350. That sucks. So obviously for equipment wise, I would say optics, vents. Maybe aim time's already good. Accuracy could be improved with the improved aiming thingy majig. You can also put turbocharger on this thing to make it really like a object 268 version number four without armor. <laughs> you could do that, or maybe just go with better aiming. You cannot do rammer. Ugh. I want turbocharger though, if this thing has a better horsepower per ton ratio, just make use of the better top speed that comes along with the turbocharger. Alright, shell velocity is not bad for AP, slower for high explosive anti tank. High explosive is high explosive. Hmm, it's a premium though, so. Ah, it's gimmicky with the double shot. Like I said, might as well just do the same damage with one round of the 152 with better penetration and better higher alpha that doesn't that doesn't expose you longer right when you do the double shot but technicalities i don't know you have to prep for the double shot so that gives a window of you being fired upon right so preparation time is actually quick two seconds compared to normally 2.5 or even three on the 703 so the preparation time is actually quick, wait time after you double shot is also quick, but switching up the gun is not quick, so they want you to double shot, but... Ick. <laughs> I don't know, you might as well just do the single shot and just be over with it. Less exposure time, less chance to get return fire, or retaliation fire, but... Uh, field modification is practically all the same for tier 8s, even its support, it doesn't matter. So let's take a look at field mods. I like my ISU 152, but they nerfed it. They nerfed the penetration to 260 from like 287 or something. Oh, okay. First one is obvious, better terrain resistance and better durability at the cost of, on paper, ultraverse speed. But effectively, you have better ultraverse because better terrain resistance. Now, second one, better accuracy or better aim time. Um, you already have decent aim time. Aim time is already great. 1.9 seconds for a 122 and two of them, that's already great. So better accuracy, obviously. I would say better accuracy. And finally, view range or camo after you fire. You have no camo after you fire, that doesn't matter. Only happens, or only good for like E25s, or smaller caliber of a gun. So this thing is somewhat not as useful as this one. Obviously view range is a lot better, so... Uh, how the hell do I feel about this? I mean, there are so many good candidates for a tank to shore crew trainer, or even credit maker, as a premium tank, so... Ah... Uh, it's all because of the gun. It's all gimmicky because of the double shot. If you have a good time with the double shot, and if you have a good trigger finger or timing while preparation of the salvo, then you'll have a good time. But in that span of you trying to prep or the skill needed, might as well fire one round of the 152 and be done with it. So I highly despise <laughs> The piece of crap that's the ISU-152K. I despise this vehicle. Mostly because this gun was originally on the normal tier 8. The BL-10 was originally on the normal tier 8. They took that away and put it with a smaller penetration. 186, not 187. But compare this to the 260. Oh, 286. Compare this to the 260. Bull crap, I hate this gun. You nerfed my ISU, you piece of shits. So, I highly despise that vehicle, but... It'll be a hell of a lot more interesting if this vehicle was something like this. Open top, twin barrel, BL-10s, 152s. 
that would be so much more interesting than Twin Barrel 122s. But then again, for balancing, you'll kill a freaking <laughs> tier 8 with one salvo. Kinda broken. I mean, hell, you take out 50% of a health to a mouse with a salvo. That's kinda good. But yeah, kinda broken. <laughs> You'll outright kill any tier 7s, let alone tier 6. So, holy crap. Uh, yeah, this thing cannot have twin 152s. So, balancing issue over there, but... I would say for rating wise... You have so many options. Let alone at tier 8. Like you already said, or like you already saw. <laughs> and we already covered. There's 6 premium tanks. Based on the IS-2 chassis, there's three ISUs. There's even more such premium tanks like the SU-130PM. This thing is good if you like snipers. It's a 130mm. It's the IS-4's gun on this vehicle. But yeah, it's not bad. It's not I I it's the IS-4 doesn't have a 130. Ah, uh, which one has... It's the muzzle brake that looks like the 122 on the IS-4, but it's a 130. So, this thing is a good sniper, this is a meme, but <laughs> it's assault tank destroyer, so you're not lacking options for a crew trainer. This thing is in the Bond Shop, the T-103, also a 122 or 130? It's a 130 that doesn't have that much alpha? It has the same alpha as a freaking 122, that sucks. Alright, so you're not lacking options. You're really not, but performance-wise, it's the difficulty of the salvo preparation. You have to get used to it. If you're good with it, if you time it correctly, when the enemy comes out of cover, then you have a good time. But I would say 6 out of 10, but if that thing actually has armor at the front, not 90mm, if this thing actually has 190 for the superstructure, it'll be like a Fernand with mobility. That will be pretty decent. Same goes for the upper plate, but I doubt it. So this thing looks like 90 for the superstructure, about 90-ish for the hull front, and 190 for the mantlet. So with that setup, with a versatile, or it's actually support, with a support tank destroyer category, I say you're sniping with this thing. So if you're sniping, might as well play the SU-130PM, right? Might as well play with this thing. You have a better time sniping with this thing than with Twin Barrel whatever. <laughs> so maybe 5.5 out of 10. The good thing about this thing is quick to aim for a 122. It is rather mobile in terms of speed compared to the IS, ISU 152. So 5.5 eh, final out of 10. Well, there you go, folks. The ISU 122-2. So as always, thank you guys for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.